Hi, this is Chris. Welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be looking at Active Primary 3, the interactive whiteboard software from Promethean, and in particular, the use of actions to create more interactive flip charts. An action will carry out a particular task when something on your page is clicked. This is a really good way of using buttons to access particular tools, but also to create interactive quizzes which the children can complete at the board. The resource library includes a number of pre-built action objects. Let me show you how we could use these. Let's say we're doing a lesson on angles, and I want to be able to show the children how to use a protractor using my whiteboard. Now to access the protractor, I could go to the special tools option, and then click on protractor, and then choose my half protractor from here. But I really want to do this in one click. So to do this, I can go to my resource library, and from here I can go to categories, shared resources, then my main resource library, and finally, action objects. Now what appears at the bottom are various action objects that I can drag onto my flip chart page. Each of these is effectively a button, and when it's clicked, it will do what the button displays. So, for example, if I were to scroll right, I can drag this button onto my page, and when it's clicked, it's going to show the protractor. Let me show you how this works. I move my mouse over the button, click on it, and now I've got my protractor tool, and I can show the children how we could use that. I think it'd be quite useful to have a calculator on this page as well, because I'm going to show the children how adding angles along a straight line totals 180. So as you can see, I've got a calculator button here, so I can click and drag that. When that's clicked, you'll see that my calculator automatically appears. So that's how we can use some of the pre-built action objects that come as part of the resource library. But you can actually create your own. To do this, I'm going to go to a new page. Here I've got a scene set up which I'd like the children to discuss. This is going to be a story opener. I want to use the spotlight tool to show particular parts of my scene without the children looking at everything in one go. To do this, I'm going to create a button. I think I'll start by using a square in the corner. And to assign an action to this, I have to double click on it. But before I do that, I've got to make sure I'm in design mode. So I'm going to double click on my object, and then from the toolbar that appears, I select the Properties button. From here, I select Actions. Now there's hundreds of different actions that you can select from this drop-down list, and actually this is a very bad way of finding them. The best thing to do is to filter that list by clicking on one of the options at the top. So I know that I want to access an active primary function when this button is clicked. So I'm going to select Active Primary Function from here. Now, as you can see, the drop-down list is now a lot shorter, and it's only showing functions that are part of the Active Primary software. So from here, I'm going to select my Circular Spotlight tool. Okay, here it is, the Circular Spotlight tool. So I click on that and press OK. And now when I come out of design mode, we'll see that clicking my red square in the corner will automatically turn on my Circular Reveal tool. Let's have a look at another time where we might want to use action objects within a flip chart file. Here I've got a page set up where the children are going to select a place they'd like to find out more about. London, Paris, Madrid or Lille. If we have a look at my page organiser, you'll see that I've got a page set up for each one of those places. So what I want to do is I want to set up those buttons to automatically take me to the correct page. Let's have a look at London to begin with. To set an action for this object, I double click on it and choose Properties. Then from the Actions menu, I'm going to specify a page to go to. So I'll click on Page, and then select Another Page. I then need to click on Set to specify what page I want it to go to. As I move my mouse over these pages, I'll see a preview, and I can find the page that's to do with London. There it is, page 5, and I'll click on OK. I'm not going to do the same for Paris, so I double-click on it and choose Properties. I select Page, and I'm going to tell this to go to another page, and this time it will be page 6. So if I now come out of design mode, we can see that when I move my mouse over London, I get the option to click on it, and when I click on it, it automatically takes me to the London page. And the same, of course, would happen for Paris. So there's one of the ways in which you could use action objects to take you to a particular page within your flip chart file. Let's have a look at one final example. This time, I've got a quiz which I'm asking the children about what the capital of France is. I've got four possible answers, and what I want to do is to use actions to play a sound effect if the child gets it right. 
So to do this, I need to go into design mode and I'm going to double click on the Paris option, which of course is my correct answer, and choose properties. This time I want it to play a file when this button is clicked. So I'll select file and from here I'm going to choose play sound. I then need to set what that sound is and I'm going to use the children cheer sound effect. As you can see, if I come out of design mode and click on Paris, I'll get the cheer sound effect. Now, of course, I could also apply a sound effect to the wrong answers. So we'll go to London, properties, we'll specify the file, and this time I'll choose wrong buzzer. So this time when I click on London, we'll get the wrong buzzer sound effect. So there we go, that's how we can use action objects to create more interactive flip chart files. This flip chart file will be available to download at the iPrimary website. Thanks very much for watching.